name's Rupam Diamant, um, and I'm the president and librarian of this project. Um, and so I want to begin with a Latin acknowledgement and a few words about what this means for us as a Canadian library. Uh, so Canada Comics Open Library would like to acknowledge that the land on which we gather is the traditional territory of the Anishinaabe, Mississaugas of the New Credit First Nation, the Haudenosaunee, and the Huron Wendat, and the indigenous peoples have lived on and cared for this land for more than 15,000 years. This territory is covered by the Dish with One Spoon, the Wam Hum Belt Treaty. Today, Toronto is still the home to many indigenous people from across Turtle Island. We acknowledge that settlers on this land directly benefit from the process of colonization. So we'd like to take a moment to think about what we can do to address this uh, in our library. Uh, so on our part, although we rely on a lot of donations, um, we're making a prioritized list of uh, comics to purchase, and this includes comics created by Indigenous creators. And if you have recommendations, please get in touch with us. Um, and we're also thinking about what we can do in the future, for example, uh, collaborating with Indigenous creators on uh, Indigenous-focused comics workshops. And we want to continue having this conversation as well. Um, so thank you for coming out today. Uh, we're very excited to be here. Um, and I'm going to turn it over to Brooke in the panel in a second. Um, how about if I don't use the mic? Is that, can you hear me? Oh yeah. yeah. Okay. yeah. Teacher voice. Is Lecture really skills. <laughs> about uh, comics and storytelling, we'll just start with some introductions so that everyone can get to know uh, who is on the panel here and where they're coming from. Um, since I'm, since it was my idea, I'll start. Uh, I come to, co uh, to comics as a researcher and, uh, and a, or a scholar and a teacher. Uh, my research largely focuses on comics journalism and, uh, and comics as a form of graphic witness and challenge to contemporary uh, commemorative and reportage uh, practices. Uh, I'm also a professor at George Brown College uh, where I teach uh, comics studies and there are classes on comics and we study the history of uh, comics studies as, as a way of approaching comics and the political nature of the, of the media. Um, I'll get our panelists to each introduce uh, themselves and tell us a bit about in what capacity you work with and think about the comics. <laughs> Um, okay. I'm Stephanie Cook, so I'm a writer and editor in comics. Uh, I also um, run an entertainment website, so I do comic critique uh, as well. And I run a website called Creator Resource and Creator Advisor, which both aim to help creators navigate the industry, learn more about it, and hopefully survive in it. Hi, I'm Arda Omer. I am a comics critic. I've had bylines on sites like Slate, uh, Women Around Comics, uh, and I wrote my first short comic in the Toronto Comics Anthology, As Good As, um, as, Good as Gold, Volume 5, this past May, and uh, yeah. I'm Jason Liu, I'm the comic creator behind Pitiful Human Lizard, Toronto's own superhero, and I'm the artist, I was one of the artists for uh, Kill Shakespeare from IDW. Hi, uh, I'm Hannah, I'm probably the only person here who's not in comics exactly per se. Uh, I'm an illustrator and a writer. I have a book called It Begins With the Body, which is a, um, a hybrid poetry prose and like, a full page illustration book. Um, yes, <laughs> that's me. Hi, I'm Ryan. I'm a comic writer. I've done uh, 
lot of stuff. I do uh, web comics called Dinosaur Comics. I do stuff in uh, print or uh, done licensed comics Adventure Time. I write a comic for Marvel called The Invisible Squirrel Girl. And uh, I've also been prose writing sort of comics adjacent stuff. Great, thank you. Uh, okay, so let's, we'll start off a little bit uh, broadly. Uh, so the question is, what are, what are some of your favorite kinds of stories to read and tell in comics and why? And we don't have to go down the line of order. <laughs> Anyone can jump in and snag a mic. There's another one down there too. The thing I like about comics is that, uh, I'm saying this is a writer who doesn't have to draw the comics. Um, <laughs> you kind of have this infinite budget where it takes almost the same amount of time to draw people sitting at a cafe as it does to have them fighting aliens on the moon. And so you're very free in the types of stories you want to tell visually because you can, you can just write it. And I, I mean, I recognize that I can write in this scene, you know, Finn and Jake fight a thousand ninjas, and that takes 10 seconds to write, take all day to draw. But the time it takes to draw a page it's not, it's not set, but it, it doesn't vary that much. It's more the amount of people you haven't seen and what's happening in the scene. So I think I, I like that a lot, that you can sort of go anywhere with your stories, not worry about do we have a set for this, or... I mean, that, that, that's comparing it to movies, but I think it's interesting. Yeah, great. Favorite kinds of stories to read and tell in comics? Uh, well, I mean, I guess, like, for me, I really like character-driven stories. I mean, obviously, most stories have characters and all and that sort of thing. But like I love when people get into them and they just have these real and complex characters that I get like attached to. And then sometimes they occasionally kill them off and I'm just like, ah! you have like a meltdown, but you just like, you know, get so invested in these characters and just like that connection with something else, you know, just that's in front of you is still astounding to me even as like a writer and editor. It's just like, how did you do that? How did you build that connection? And I, I love that. It's just such a yeah, um, I really enjoy stories about um, young people. So teens. I mean, it's it's. I started out reviewing books, uh, especially young uh, young adult novels and things like that. And then when I was reviewing uh, comics, it made sense that comics about young people was what interested me. And then the one comic I wrote um, <laughs> is about uh, two college kids. Uh, and so I don't know. I just find young people. Are just really great at put, like putting in weird situations. Um, yeah. uh, I, I like more of like, like the slice of life stuff. Um, like some of my inspirations are Daniel Klaus and Adrian Tomini of uh, Optic Nerve, and like they they like they they they're really good at capturing like very awkward moments and like maybe three panels. Um, I just like those moments uh, and. One of the things that like I, I've, I've done in my comfort, like, because it's it's a superhero comp that I, that I, I write, um, but I, I like to focus on like some of the, the stuff that we don't see that superheroes do, like after the action happens, after like a big catastrophe happens, like what are some of the repercussions that happen after that, like, uh, yeah, like just the interactions with with people on the street, like what their thoughts are, because you don't really see that kind of. Uh, Perspective. Um, I think for me, I really like personal narrative books to actually read and tell. Um, I think that oftentimes when marginalized writers engage in comics or any kind of storytelling with personal narrative, like we see it as some kind of cop out. But in truth, creating a really great visual story about someone's own personal narrative takes a lot of sophistication and there's something really um, beautiful about seeing people illustrate these really tender intimate moments in their own lives it's literally like seeing their most private memories and the way that I've seen some of that displayed on a page is just really really moved me and probably the reason why I like to write a lot of there's a real intimacy with the medium of comics, which speaks to what you're saying, and, and even comics that aren't uh, personal narrative driven still have that that intimacy or, or identifying yeah, characters, characteristics. Um, yeah, I mean, just like the linear kind of answers together. 
personal stories are very important to me as well. Um, then to go further, like my, my interest is, is across the board in, in all kinds of mediums, but anything to do with health is going to draw me in a lot more just because I think those conversations are much harder to have in other places, in other ways. And um, some of the beautiful flexibility of comics that I really enjoy is translating things that could not possibly be seen from any other perspective, could not be seen unless someone is showing you them specifically and talking to you about them. And the way that comics gives us flexibility of um, medium, like the materials that you're working with, but then also having, you know, the abstraction of words and then the immediacy of images and the intimacy of those things blending. It just allows for that very, very specific voice to come through. And when that very specific voice is coming through about something that is so hard to communicate, it's just an endless well of creativity. Good, this is, that's a perfect segue to something that I, I want to put at the forefront of this discussion, which is when we talk about uh, comics as a medium, there's so much to be said about the formal features um, that they use and their ability to overlap time and space to fragment a story um, uh, visually in a way that resembles uh, or can often resemble uh, forms of memory. Uh, gutters and panel shapes and sizes can be manipulated to configure a really particular kind of reading experience um, for, for the reader. And so my question here um, is, and we're, we're getting at it already, sort of hedging around it. What interests you about comics as a unique medium for, for storytelling as opposed to other, other types of, uh, of media? Um, I think it's just, for me, it's just faster than like uh, film production. Like, like film production, like you, re you require a team, you gotta pay your staff to do this or that. Whereas like the comic medium, like, you're the director, you're the casting director, you're uh, the costume designer, and, and all of that, all in one. And uh, uh, yes, it, uh, you like uh, to draw. Yeah, <laughs> in a way, yeah. That's well. I look at some of my other projects. Like I, I like to just write and draw my own stuff. But yeah, I I, I, I agree. I think I, a lot of the stuff I do is comedy, and the nice thing with comics is that you have full control over the piece, even more so than prose. Like when you're writing prose, you don't know where the words going to land on the page, so you turn the page and perhaps blow the joke, but for comics, you've got the page as a unit, and so you've got uh, control over how this is experienced. So it's not just the power out of comics. <laughs> but, but, like, but make, making sure like the execution is done the way yeah. you want it to. Yeah, and the, I think the, the magic I like with comics is that when you have these, the words and figures blending together, you get these neat tricks to look elsewhere, where like the words like, go in one direction, the pictures in another, and the subjectivity of it. It's, it does stuff you can't do in a reading, which I think is a deal. Yeah. I think it's like, you know, like, I don't draw at all. Like, you know, I, I just write things and I edit things and that sort of thing. But like, it's so interesting because when I used to read growing up, you would visualize all these characters in the book and you'd be like, oh, this is how I picture this character and this is how, you know, I see it. And like with comics, you're still doing that as you kind of write out your like idea for all of those characters and bringing them all to life, but you're visualizing the panels and like basically writing those cues for an artist and making sure that that translates into a story. And even like more interesting about this medium, like for me, it's that like I get to collaborate with an artist and bring a story to life in a way that I can't. You know, I could write prose, but for me, like. I've tried that and it doesn't really entirely work for me. Like comics, I'm able to tell a much more coherent story and I love seeing what an artist comes up with. You know, like depending on like what kind of artist I'm working with, which communication I feel like is a very important thing, um, I can either give really vague descriptions and let them build the world or I can go into like greater detail because they're already in my head and kind of art direct as well. So there's just, so much you can do, and it's for me at the heart. Like it's like this amazing collaboration experience. Yeah, it's funny because with prose, it's the opposite for me in comics. Because for me, uh, my my I came into this general literary world through pro prose, and so for me, engaging in comics because I don't draw. Catherine Hellenic did a fantastic job of comic I wrote, and she was able to create like this, like another layer of it that I didn't expect. 
that really felt satisfying as a writer, generally speaking, it's it's really hard to rel relinquish that control because unless you're like a draw, like if you draw and write, at the end of the day, you're taking your story. It's not like a, like a truly collaborative experience. You're taking your story and you're giving it to someone else to 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 essentially run wild, wild with, it, right? Because but with comics as a reader, which is what I mostly know as, uh, it's it's great because it's those silent moments where there aren't any words on the page that really shows the power of comics. Like you'll have. You'll read a comic, but you can immediately go back. You just finished reading it, and you can go back and find new things, right? New, new emotions. Uh, if you have, I think up in Bitch Planet, there was this really great, I forgot what issue was, it was probably the earlier issues. There was an entire scene happening in the background of the comic, where I think one of the, I think it was Penny, was having a, an entire brawl, like, while well, two characters are talking, and that, I chuckled so hard. I laughed, crying my eyes out because it was so good. Mm -hmm. And I think those moments are, are really what comic has an edge over anything else. But also access, um, accessibility, right? Kids can get into comics, and or even people who might not might ne not necessarily be literate per se, but that's our entry point into reading. And what people take, um, what people don't understand about comics is the fact that they think that's where it ends. Great, these kids can read, they go on to prose, because prose is way better, but that's not the case, right? It's then you're now taking these kids and you're help, you're you're evolving their understanding of storytelling, which is great for prose, right? Because prose also offers a, a different form of storytelling, right? So yeah. Good, great. There's a lot of decoding skills involved in comics that you yeah, sure, as a as a younger person you might be developing even as a as a well versed adult reader, there are still those skills are being asked to or you're being asked to use them in reading comics at all, at, at all times. Um, I was just going to add on to that the accessibility of um, comics is, I think, what makes it such a special kind of medium. Um, I think, you know, for a lot of people who are reading something and are unable to visualize it, it can really impair your experience. Like, not everyone is necessarily going to. Some people like using their imaginations to put everything together. Not everybody necessarily benefits from that. And I know in my own work, mixing writing with illustrations, um, it's helped people access my poetry as a medium that they may have not really been able to decipher before because it's considered like this really abstract and like weird medium, and like a lot of people see going through this like just this really inaccessible type of writing. So um, to create full page illustrations to go with it and to sort of explain it, it, it helps people understand the content and it helps people, um, I think, connect with it on a more personal level because you get to actively show them the world building you're doing, like you're drawing it out, you're writing the scene, and, like, and that way they really get to enter your world without like, Training themselves to figure out what you're trying to convey. <laughs> yeah, my my favorite thing about um, comics is how open its language is actually, in terms of like you're talking about coding and like sort of how much you're telling people is there, and then how much you're just allowing like in the art to unfold and to be present for potentially a whole other story, potentially a whole other communication. It doesn't have to be strictly another narrative or another uh, specific like idea. Like I, I, I'm, I'm a big fan of the, the comics work that actually uh, creates its own language very specifically in that like choosing this color means something and choosing to uh, switch the type of marker or pen that's being used is indicating something, it's coding that language, but it's a language specific to that artist. And it can go as far as like, what paper is this made of? And maybe different papers throughout the book indicate different things. Uh, maybe the book is like telling you, I'm a book the whole time. Maybe you're holding it and it's like, you're holding me. Or maybe it's on the screen and you're able to scroll through it and there's something about the light that's playing a part in that world. Like it actually can go so much deeper than just the story that's being told. Good. Great. Yes. Uh, and you know, ideas about comics and, and literary, literacy or and, and 
accessibility. Like there's a really long history of comics being uh, like coming from that in the form of, of, of literacy. On the more uh, recent uh, side, I guess, there's two approaches to comics that have really emerged to be really popular, and that would be genres of autobiography and memoir, which I know we've already brought up a little bit, and the idea of, of retelling stories or, or events. So um, why, this is really open-ended, but uh, why do you think that is? Why, what about something like uh, genres of autobiography and memoir? Uh, what about those genres seem to fit so well in the medium of comics? And why are people using comics to retell, uh, retell stories? What's the power in retelling stories and why comics? Um, in terms of like retelling stories, um, so when I when I hear that, I think of a lot of uh, like historical comics, like that go over different historical events. Um, and for me, it's just a way to make it more interesting. Like a lot of it is stuff that I already learned about in school, but that I never really absorbed. And I think when we take complex events and we retell them through comics, you can get a way wider audience to engage with those stories. Like, we really have to think about the way that memoirs and autobiographies are told in these like bulky books that like nobody wants to pick up, or they're told it's like the thing that you're forced to read in school and that you don't really engage with. Um, and for some reason, when it's translated to a comic, you know, you have a lot of snooty people that feel like that's this somehow is like tainting this great historical story. But really, all it's doing is making it something just more real and more enjoyable for most people. So I think that's why this is sort of coming about is because like we're changing the rules on how a story should be told and what story is like appropriate for a comic. Like, that whole rule that's gone now. <laughs> there's, there's nothing that's necessarily inappropriate for a comic. We're finding, we're finding a way to make comics and illustration tell all kinds of stories, which I think is kind of amazing. <laughs> like, exactly what you said, like, it's just accessible. You know, like, big history texts and that sort of thing remind me of school. And, like, I was saying before this panel, like, I'm not particularly, like, academic. Like, I did fine in school, but like I couldn't really pursue that to do anything further. But like I associate those kind of texts and like that stuff with school, which I just wasn't really able to absorb and kind of keep that. But like now I get to learn about these amazing things that happened and like see like the context of it on the page that I understand and just sticks with me. So I, I feel like it's like a chance to actually learn well after the fact and just enjoy these stories that I wasn't able to when I was younger, or appreciate when I was younger. Exactly. There's also a lot of, uh, you know, since we're talking about ideas of like um, textbooks and, and that kind of history, it's a really official, traditional uh, kind of history where uh, there's a lot of comics that are retelling histories in order to um, give a, a representation or a voice to, to stories that might have been uh, sort of made invisible through this more official history telling. Um, and, sort of, and to try to make history a little bit more uh, complex in that way so that you do get exposure to, to voices that have to say were left out or, or, or rendered silent uh, in that traditional sort of history. Um, it's like that, um, I, think, I think it's also the level in which we engage with these stories, right? So if it's like a written with like words, we're like, all right, cool, and, and I think what Hannah was talking about before, the idea of that someone's, people using their imaginations. So I could read two different books about slavery, and one will probably do a better job in like really getting me to, to that emotional place, while another, even though the stress is horrific, for whatever reason, I'm not there. Um, but when you look at, in the case of, say, Octavia Butler's, um, uh, oh no, what is it called? Kindred. Uh, <laughs> her, it was adapted recently, um, and to, for someone to have read that book, and she's a phenomenal writer, but then to engage with that graphic novel is like another level, because now you're seeing it play out on the, on, the, on the page in the way that people will hear about stories, like, oh, did you hear about this thing? And you're like, man, that's terrible, but then it's different if you look at it unfolds in video type of thing. Um, or in the case of like John Lewis, um, his comics, the name of that 
like you, you know, like well, you, you look at Star Wars but as a movie, like they and they, they do lots of references to things that happened in the Clone Wars. They don't do flashbacks. Uh, they just talk about it. But um, in, in the comics, like um, like sometimes, like like I wonder, like like what's the best way to like to execute a flashback, or is flashback needed, or should could it just be kind of like retold uh, from someone's personal perspective, or like just a, their their own narrative of it, um, or could it be like you know like a flashback with like the cartoony like very um, like the thought bubble uh, panels, um, yeah like. It's, it's, um, that's been like one of my challenges, like, like just yeah, just going back or like like how like just how to execute that. How best to represent something that you want to sort of do in the This is also from a an industry or, or or critique sort of perspective too. What are some challenges that face I guess the the industry? What are some challenges in telling stories through? <laughs> um, uh, comics as a as a creator or illustrator. Really, it's a lot of the <coughs> information density where. You can get a lot more dialogue on a page of prose than you can comics. I write very important comics. I recognize that, but <laughs> I'm always holding back what I, what I want to put on the page. So it's, you need to have the same room for the picture, and that's, that's part of the medium, but it means telling. It, it, I feel like you need more pages on more, to tell the same story in comics. But you get a better version of it. <laughs> Communicate with your artist because you do have like a limited amount of space that you can use for like uh, captions and dialogue and everything. So you need to be able to give instruction to the artist and dictate what needs to go on that page to tell the story in a way that the readers are going to get it and it's going to actually properly convey what you're trying to do. So you know, like it's a fine line between like like putting down every single detail that needs to be there. Um, and like giving room for the artist to interpret and do what's best for the page and yeah. kind of make sure that your story, like, I mean, again, it is a visual medium, so you don't necessarily need to put all the words on page. Like, if you have something that's just like, ah, we walked through the park, do you need to put that on the page? Because they can literally see you walking through the park. Like, it's finding like a compromise between what you need to say and what the artist can say with the images. Yeah, and just the approach to writing comics um, is different for the writer, right? You, you, you're starting from the visual place. Like, you have the story, uh, and some people might just write it all out, the story, and then try to um, turn it into this thing that they can then give to the, the artist. But I found that I actually started off with just, like, thumbnails. I'm like, I knew, I knew what the story was about, but I, I, I'm a terrible uh, artist. But the thumbnail um, setup really helped me with my writing, so that by the time I gave the script to the artist, um, it felt like a more cohesive story storytelling. Because that's when comics failed, I think. Because when the art and the and the and, and, and the words aren't really married, essentially. Yeah. Um, I would say like my biggest challenge is um, picking an actual style to draw in. So the, the style that you use can very much change the way that the content is read. So I have a couple of different illustration series, and um, I choose different styles for different series because it, it, it absolutely impacts the way that the story is told, even if the words are exactly the same. Um, and so when I was like writing it begins with the body, like I wanted everything to look like unpolished and kind of awkward and you know purposely like sloppy in some areas because that was what the narrative was about was about like coming into your own coming of age story um whereas you know if i was telling something that was supposed to be very like dark and scary i would probably have to make everything just sharper and high contrast and really edgy um so i think picking an actual style to draw in to understand how your reader will interpret it can be really difficult because um, it takes a lot of trial and error. Like the way that you interpret a style might be really different than the way the audience is interpreting it. So um, you kind of go through like some mistakes there. 
Great. And that, again, is highlighting how much the reader is sort of, you're thinking about them as you, uh, as you create them. Yeah, I just think the biggest challenge across the board with comics is time. Um, I mean, in the, in the comic itself, you were talking about, you know, how to convey jumps or changes in time, obviously. But then the creation process, because you're doing writing, and then there's art, and there's inevitably changes, and the interplay going back and forth, and maybe your idea changes, and maybe you hate something, and scrap it, and start all over again. Whatever it is you do, and however long it took you to make it, it will take someone an hour or less to read it. So, so it's very hard to make a uh, scale of you know, the work and effort that you can put into something, balancing that within your life, how you make money, how you sustain yourself, how you share it with people, and then to like scale all of that against what it's gonna become when it's something that someone can either purchase from you or just consume immediately for free, and then how that sort of gets returned to you, like how your investment gets returned to you and all your time and energy. And obviously like you, you just can't compare what you spend uh, in terms of energy, money, or any of your other resources, you can't compare that spending to the impact it can have on someone's life. It's like, it's inevitable. There's no point. I, I, I wouldn't even want to. But there is the reality of your day to day. And then, yeah, being as clear as you can to make those moments happen in, in the story itself is a whole other thing. There's lots of support that's needed for all aspects of the process biggest challenge for me. For sure. For and on, um, sorry, on the topic of like time and money, because you did mention like issues in the industry. Yeah. I think the biggest thing in the industry right now is just for creators to be able to afford to, to create comics, mm -hmm. to be able to live off of their comics, or at the very least be paid for what it's worth to create comics. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of work. Mm -hmm. They should be able to be, get paid, like tr they should be able to uh, get the monetary value for their work, I think. Um, at least the granting system here in Canada is pretty good, but like in general, just more of that for comics would be great. Um, and just the idea of intellectual property, I think respecting the fact that creators are people who create. Um, and so all of that really does help with the output of great comics. Because you hear so many stories of just creators trying to do a GoFundMe or whatever it is in the States uh, to be able to uh, just get health care or whatever it is or afford their rent and so we, we talk a lot about comics creation but I think the realities of people especially in the context of marginalized people as well who need who desperately need avenues to tell their stories need to be able to to have basic needs met to tell these stories as well so I think the industry itself also needs to understand that comics is definitely here to stay comics is being is you're seeing it in the context of publishing now, there are imprints dedicated to, to comics as well, so it's a medium that needs to also support its creators. Yeah. Well, I think, again, we were talking before this a little bit, and a little bit about like creator resource does, um, is talk about like, the page rates in comics, which are pretty, like, for, like across the board with very few exceptions, and like it's not really viable for the most part to like be in comics, like, full time necessarily. Like, I know I'm not, Ryan, right? like, you do full time like comics and stuff too, but I think having a day job for most of us is required. Like, I have a day job and then when it's quiet, I'm just like, squirreling away on stuff, but like, I'm making time because that's what I want to do. But, sorry, I like, was like, do you have a full time job? <laughs> I've never, I guess I'm kind I guess, I guess yes. Um, I've done like, when I was doing web comics, I was doing full time, I was also uh, programming for myself, and I've done much, I sort of always have little things happening. So if anything catastrophic fails, I'm not out of the street. Um, I find it's like a support, like I, I can continue having like comics be a passion while also not having to like scrounge for money. Yeah. No, I've heard people joke that if you want to be a full-time cartoonist, it's great to have a partner with a full-time job. <laughs> You've paid enough for two, and then you're smooth sailing. <laughs> um, there's a great Chris Ware quote from this obscure French interview I saw where he's uh, talking about doing comics, and he's like, you know, you, you look up and 
it's spring and you look down in your drawing and you look up and it's summer and all your friends are getting married and you look down in your drawing and you look up and it's winter and you're still working on the same comic. And it, it ends with him just sort of staring at the camera like a confession style. He just holds it for like 10 seconds and just holds it. And nobody speaks. Then I find out Chris Ware has like happily married kids. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> well, they were involved in, in creating com comics and, and not to say, not to include writers in this equation, but I, I know for illustrators too, like the labor that you, and pressure you put on your body uh, for long periods of time is, is something to, that's in the, in the question of what are some of the challenges of telling, or I guess of being involved in the writing is 100% the easy job. Yeah. Like I, I will say that. Full stop. <laughs> 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 yeah, I mean, I got problem with my hands, but the rest of my body's pretty okay. Um, I know that I have a couple of other questions and directions that I want to take our conversation. I know that we, we want to take a bit of a, a break. Is it, what is it, like five minutes? Um, yeah, five.